Well, after a day of being battered by the elements, we have retreated inside to discuss the action on day one of the Grand National Festival 2019. With me to talk about all the action is Racing Post senior writer Lee Mottershead. And Lee, we'll start with uh, some tales of redemption, if we like, mm. because uh, Kalashnikov, unseated at the Cheltenham Festival, Kenboy fell in the Gold Cup, both came back this uh, today and won emphatically. Yeah, it's been a it's been a miserable day weather-wise with lots of good stories, as you say. And we had the first one in the very first race with Kalashnikov landing the manifesto novices chase. Of course, connections have had such high hopes for him this season over fences after his uh, excellent season as a novice hurdler. And truth be told, it hadn't really happened until today when it did happen. He was uns he unseated at, at Cheltenham. But here, um, in a race in which he was really at his best, he, he got the better of Labago Wa, had her beaten the final fence, idled close home, but ultimately won really well. Amy Murphy, the new market-based trainer, new market not associated with big winners over jumps, but Amy is flying the jumps flag there. She was understandably very emotional in the winner's enclosure. She was absolutely cock -hoot for everyone associated with the horse as well, including the jockey Jack Quinn, and both were having their first grade one wins. Mm. So a big moment for both. And as is the case with, with this sport, you're always looking ahead to the next, the next big race. And Amy was saying the Ryanair chase next season will be the Kalashnikov plan. Excellent. And he's already priced up, I believe, for the Ryanair, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Too soon for me to be starting to punt <laughs> on the Ryanair chase. But yeah, you can back him if you want. That's it. And of course, another race that threw up lots of stories was the Aintree Hurdle. Perhaps not the story we expected with Super Sunday winning. Uh, Bouvardere sort of you know, ran well, but you know, is that, was that the trip that beat him, do we think? And of course, Faheen pulled up. Could that be the last we've seen of him? So we start with Faheen. Um, all seemed to be going pretty well with him, relatively speaking, until he was pulled up by Ruby Walsh, going past the stands of the circuit to go. Ruby said afterwards he just never felt right. He was never... He was backing off his hurdles, didn't feel like the horse he knew. Initially, we thought that the horse had come back perfectly fine. As it turned out, he was found by the veterinary officer to have atrial fibril fibrillation or an irregular heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So while initially after the race, Willie Mullins and Rich Ritchie were saying, hopefully all being well, he'd get to punch his town. I think we have to see now, see how the horse goes over the next few days. They, they clearly won't risk such a wonderful horse. He's been a great servant to them. So we'll see if we see Faheen again on a race course. It was a pretty miserable race for Willie Mullins in that Mellon, mm. the dual champion hurdle second, was going along nicely in front when he came down at the third last flight. That turned it into a, a race for anybody to take. And it became a real scrap in which Bouverdere, the two-time champion hurdle winner, was probably found out, I think, by a mixture of the ground and the trip. It became really hard work to take the ground. I mean, it's been raining all day pretty much. More rain than Aintree had expected. Soft ground, probably hopefully as soft as it will get for the week, but it was too much for Bouvet Dare. It played to the strengths of Super Sunday, who's one of those horses who's pretty, he's not a particularly sexy horse. No one gets wildly excited about poor Super Sunday, but he's a very good horse um, with a string of grade one wins to his name. And I think conditions today for him were ideal because three miles is probably a bit too far from at grade one level, especially when you get the ground like this. Two miles is probably not good enough to be the very best. Over two and a half miles, like sort of Goldilocks trying to find the perfect porridge, <laughs> it was just right for him. And he produced an excellent battling performance under Robbie Power. That's it. Um, and talking of excellent performances, battling indeed, Pentland Hills. Yeah. Very impressive, you know, followed up his triumph hurdle win with a win here today. Yeah, um, for a, a racing club, um, slash sort of syndicate owners group. The owners group has got 3,000 shares in this racehorse. Oh, just over 2,000 people have got shares. They pay £57 each for a share. So it's affordable. Yeah. You know, you could have a grade one winner and they've got a horse now that's won a triumph hurdle and an anniversary hurdle. Not surprisingly, they were absolutely overcome some of their members. I was speaking to people um, who hadn't really been involved in racehorse ownership before. They've got involved now and they're not surprisingly loving it. I have to say it's not what it's always like winning grade ones at Cheltenham and Aintree. But that was a grand effort, held off Fakir Duduri and Bound of Outlaws. Um, he'd been interesting horse as he, as he goes forward Penton Hills, not least because Nicky Henderson made the point. He's rated 73 on the flat and that rather excited Nicky Henderson, who I think we're looking at maybe something like the Cesarich. Um, or just a decent flat handicap anyway to try and exploit that rating once we get into the um, the late summer, early autumn. That's 
it when the weather's hopefully a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. can't get worse. Um, a horse who obviously managed very well in the conditions today was Top Wood, ridden by Tabitha Worsley, who was beaming after winning the first of three races this week over the National Fences, the Fox Hunters. And not surprisingly so, that horse gave her a fantastic ride over the big green fences. Um, and Tabitha's story is great. I say it's great, it's great now. She broke her back um, in a fall at Ludlow in 2017. But she's, as is so often the case with this race course, you have these wonderfully heroic stories um, that the jockeys so often produce and the horses so often produce. In Tabitha's case, she's fought back from that serious injury. She had a wonderful ride off Top Wood, who just held off Burning Ambition. In fact, over re, regained the lead in the closing stages, having lost it to, to Burning Ambition. Um, but yes, yeah, so a great story there. Great as well that all the horses came back after the race unscathed, similarly with the jockeys. That was the story all day long. Yeah. Um, and a day when, in the other Grey One race that we've not mentioned so far, Kenboy um, made all to win the, the Betway Bowl, a race in which he redeemed himself after his early tip, tip up in the, in the Gold Cup. Um, that was a really, really impressive performance from him. He loved the ground, got a great ride from the front by Ruby. Clan decided by the King George and it probably wasn't suited by the conditions. He didn't perform to his best, neither did Bristol Demai, neither did Elegant Escape. So it wasn't a race that probably the form is too solid. But an excellent effort from, from Ken Boy, who heads on now to Punchestown on their Gold Cup, where he'll meet the, the Gold Cup winner from his own yard, Album Photo. Mm. Interesting that will be. Mm. Uh, talking of interesting, of course, today has been uh, very interesting from a Grand National perspective because we had yeah. the declarations earlier today at 10 o'clock, but then there's been a bit of movement since then. Yeah, there has been a bit of movement since then. So when the decks came in, the, the big news at that point was that Pair of Brown Eyes, a Lennon's the National winner who'd been the best handicapped horse going into the Grand National, wasn't declared. He now goes to the Irish Grand National. Um, but since then... We've lost another horse in the race, Maldini, um, who represents the presenting Percy Connections, was very well fancied by many people. He has picked up an injury, so he doesn't run, which meant that the first reserve, just a par for the Jimmy Moffat yard, gets into the race. Still scope and potential for horses to get into it before one o'clock tomorrow, so we've still got three reserves. They'll be waiting and hoping, because of course this is what happens with the Grand National, you never know. Um, so we've lost Maldini, we've gained just a par, and potentially it looks like Gordon Elliott might have lost two of his 13 declared runners in that Don Poli and Outlander have been sold here at the Goff sale that began just after racing. He's still gone now. You can probably hear Henry Beebe in the distance. Uh, Don Poli's gone for 170,000 guineas. Looks like he'll join Phil Kirby's yard. Um, and Outlander sold for 165,000 guineas, I think off the top of my head, if I remember that rightly. And he is joining the ownership of Phil Cunningham and it looks like rich trainer Richard Spencer. So, um, so Gordon Elliott, not quite as heavily handed in the Grand National as he was, but still with 11 runners, a Grand National record. So um, he won't be crying too much, but imagine if you win the Grand National with a horse you acquired mm. less than 48 hours before the race. That'd be some story. You might even feel sorry for Gordon Elliott. Well, yeah, it. well <laughs> just the 11 in the race now for Gordon. That's it. Uh, and great for Phil Kirby, of course, because he was obviously looking for the Black Lion running, um, who was out last week because of injury. So, yeah, yeah, so Phil and his owner, they're back in the, they're back in the game again. That's it. So. And 170 grand for Don Poli. Blimey. Mm. Cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should have had a whip round in the press room. That's it, yeah. Um, anyway, lots uh, of excitement today and a lot to look forward to over the next couple of days. And hopefully as well, we're keeping our fingers crossed, better weather too.